Mattel is really pumping out these cases one after another. Just a few days ago, I reviewed the cars in 2016 case D, and here we are already with 2016 case C. Now this case came out before case D did, but I was not able to get these until after I had already received my case D cars from Amazon. And now I was actually lucky enough to find all of these at a local Target store, and I have actually seen this case at several different Targets in my local area, so personally they're not too hard to find for me, and I know this case has been popping up everywhere in the United States at Target. A lot of people have been able to find this case and surprisingly there's only been one report of this case at Walmart and I believe it was in the Easter bins but besides that this case is so far exclusive to Target in the United States. Now also thankfully Mattel is getting a little bit better at their distribution and this case has also shown up in Australia and some countries in Europe. So I really applaud Mattel for doing that. Now let's get into your review of each of these in the package and then we'll move on to looking at them loose. I have eight cars to review today from the case. I know there's quite a few so I hope you stay tuned and watch the entire video but I don't mind if you don't because I do understand that we may not all have time to watch a really long video. So let's start off here with one of my favorites from the case. Mood Springs or his real name is Chuck Armstrong. And of course, he is in the Piston Cup series. There you go. You have the Daredevil Garage app logo that will appear on every single one of these cars. And he is number 9 out of 14 in the Piston Cup series. Now, one thing I just wanted to point out, you may find this case with the car is taped. As you can see, there's tape on there around the blisters. And now this is not man-made tape. I'm not, I shouldn't say man-made, but manually applied tape. This is applied by a machine by Mattel because I feel like Mattel has been having some sort of gluing issue. The adhesion is not working properly and the blisters are popping off. Now, a few weeks ago, I bought one of the cars in this case off eBay and it came in an envelope which is bad to begin with, but the blister was detached from the card. If you guys don't remember, that was my nitroate, and I feel like that was because of Mattel's adhesion problem. Now, as you can see here, this one has tape, but there are a few ones that I have found in a different store that do not have tape. As you can see, here's one that does not have tape. I'll actually compare it to another Mood Springs here. As you can kind of see there, there's tape and then there's no tape. Now, I am going to open the ones that have tape because I do prefer a nice clean card, but I don't want to end up hanging these and while I'm sleeping, have the blister like literally fall off the card and land on the floor. That'd be pretty funny, but at the same time, kind of devastating. All right, let's move on to the back here now. As you can see, we have Billy Oil Changer, Claude Scruggs, and Aiken Axler. Those are three of the classic Piston Cup racers, and of course, the King. The description for the series reads, The King, Chick Hicks, and Lightning McQueen compete in a tiebreaker race to win the Piston Cup Championship. I know I do not like this. Incorrect, incorrect. You guys know why. These three racers did not participate in the Los Angeles International Speedway, and it even says right here, Lightning McQueen, Chick Hicks, and the King were the only ones that actually participated, so I don't know why they should change that. I mean, they really should. But, I don't know, that's not my business. Mattel Logic again. Now here is actually the technically only new character in the case, Andy Vaporlock. Now I did a review of him a few weeks ago, so if you want to check that out, click right here, or the link will be down in the description below. Now he is in the Rusty's Racing Series, number 5 of 12, a very heavy car as well, I really like his art, looks pretty nice. On the back here we can see Donna Pitts, Jonathan Wrenchworks, Fred, and the Deluxe Mac. The description for the series reads, After the Danico 400, Lane McQueen meets and greets his excited Rusty's fans wanting to be just like him. Pretty cool series, we are getting a lot, a lot of rusty cars. Speaking of rusty cars, here's one right here. Although not really a tent rusty car, it was actually the car that appeared in McQueen's commercial. Jonathan Wrenchworks, he is number 3 of 12. And on the back here, we have the same as before, but instead of Jonathan Wrenchworks, we have Lightning McQueen with Sign, who is also in this case, and I'll be doing a review of him. 
And lastly, for this set of cars here, we have Artis Ramon, who is technically new, but the only difference is between him and Body Shop Ramon is that Artis Ramon here does not have the paint gun, and we'll talk more about that later. He is in the number 95 return series, four of seven. On the back here, we actually can see a new two pack that will be coming out very soon. Mater McQueen with no tires. There we have Galloping Gear Grinder and Otis, who is actually in this case as well, but I already reviewed them when he came out in case Q. The description for the series reads, After months of burning rubber on the track, McQueen can't wait to return to Radio Springs and hang out with his old friends. Alright, that is all for these four, and I'll be right back with the next ones. Next up here we have Nitroid, aka Aiken Axler, one of the original Piston Cup racers released in 2006. Of course, in the Piston Cup series, he is number 5 out of 14. On the back here, it shows Hall Ingas, Claude Scruggs, James Cleaner, and Chick Hicks with the same picture and description as Mood Springs. Next up here, we have Octane Gain, also known as Billy Oil Changer. I love this guy's art. Very, very cool indeed. Of course, in the Piston Cup series, and he is number 8 out of 14. On the back here, we actually see Chuck Armstrong, and that's an incorrect prototype picture because he actually has the body of RPM or Octane Gain, and his actual car became the model of Nitroid, so it's just kind of a prototype image. Same with James Cleaner. As you can see, it has the black grill, which actually didn't make it onto the die cast. All right, next up here we have Lightning McQueen with Sign. Now I think this might be my favorite art on a die cast yet this year. Now we've had some pretty cool art, but I just love the expression McQueen has. I love how they place the sign in front of him. And when McQueen with Sign was originally released back in 2013, he just had a regular art of Lightning McQueen. So I'm really glad Mattel took the effort to make the special art for this McQueen. Good job, Mattel. Now he is number four out of 12 in the Rusty's Racing Series. And on the back, nothing that we have not seen before already. So I'll just move on to the last one I'll be reviewing in this case, which is Giuseppe Motorsi, also known as Francesco Bernoulli's crew chief. He is number or he is number two out of nine in the World Grand Prix Pit Crew series. And on the back, nothing too important. We just see Austin Littleton, Autobahn, and Giuseppe himself. Now a quick side note I wanted to mention about Austin Littleton is that he is in 2016 case E, E I believe, and that has been found in Australia very recently, so expect to see that in bigger numbers soon. The description for the series reads, Behind every famous WGP racer is a pit crew skilled in racing know-how. Their mission, get their racer across the finish line first. And there you see a picture of Team Nigel Gearsley. I definitely love to see some pities of some pities like Nigel Gearsley ones right there. So I'll be right back with all these cars loose and we'll be able to take a look at them. To begin, let's look at Aiken Axler, also known as Nitroid number 28. And now, like I said earlier in the video, I bought one of these a few weeks ago on eBay and it came like this. Literally, this is exactly how it showed up in the envelope. And now, although shipping it in an envelope definitely did not help, I don't believe that was the primary cause of why the blister came off of the card. It's probably because of the gluing issue Mattel has been having, and therefore Mattel has now been putting tape on many of their die casts that are in the stores now, especially from 2016 case C, and I've also seen some planes with it as well. Now, unfortunately, I only got a partial refund on this. Kind of a story that I don't want to really tell right now. But on the upside, I do have the 2016 Nitroid here to show and compare with the old version. So that is the positive that comes from this. So let's start with him and we'll compare him to his new version here, which actually looks pretty nice, clean, and crispy. I'm liking this. There's actually quite a few differences that I can spot right off the bat. So first of all, as you guys know, all of the Piston Cup racers and a lot of other characters for that matter as well are being released with flat eyes. There's no raised eyes, there's no depth to it, it's just 
completely flat going across whereas the older version there was actually some depth to it so if you ran your finger fingernail across it you could feel the difference in depth between the white space right there and his eyebrows now you can also see how the eyes on the new version here are a little bit smaller at least that's what i can tell from it, it seems like the older version here had a bigger or larger eyes and so other than that, basically all the decals are the same. It seems like maybe the new version's darker, or maybe my version from way back in the day has just faded a little bit. So as you can see, it says Nitroid High Energy Drink. So this is probably like Gatorade. I kind of realized when I did my transberry juice video that transberry juice is kind of more like coca-cola or something like that whereas this right here would be gatorade or powerade some sort of athletic drink that makes you perform better so on the back here you can see his cool orange flame that kind of blends in with the black here a very cool design i really like it nitroid logo as well no cool slogan at all just kind of a description of his product there and there you go you have the other sponsors that he has he's got some pretty cool silver gray rims with the light gear on there and before he just kind of had but it seems more apparent now or just more noticeable in my opinion now let's move on to Octane Gain, also known as Billy Oil Changer. And now, again, this is one of the older Piston Cup racers. So my version here is a little bit damaged and chipped, especially on the back here. So I should really pick up an extra when I see one. Now this here has the raised eyelids because it's the older version, but on the newer version here, it has the flat eyelids, unfortunately. But I mean, I honestly... To be completely honest with you, I don't really mind it. I don't really care that much. His rooms are actually pretty nicely detailed. He's got orange in the middle and kind of a yellow trim going around it. Now, his product here is Turbo Vitamins, which is, I guess that's pretty cool. I, I would assume it's some supplement, again, to make you perform better. Just kind of like, I don't know, five hour energy. I wouldn't really say that, but you guys know that there are some like pills out there that I don't necessarily recommend those though, but. They would, I guess, make you perform better according to the brands there. <laughs> That's kind of a completely different subject there. So on the back here, he just has his Octane Gain decals, number 58. Pretty cool racer. I, I feel like kind of the older racers are sometimes overlooked. And this year, we actually kind of got three of the older racers, which would be Leakless. Sorry for moving the camera. Nitroid and Octane Gain here himself. So pretty cool about that. Now let's move on to Lightning McQueen with Sign. Now, as I said, he was originally released in 2013, and that was his only release with the Sign. Now, basically, the Sign is just this plastic piece that's actually pretty well made, although I believe this is a sticker on here, not really paint, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's a pretty nice sticker nonetheless. And it has these two kind of over overlap things on here that when you put on the car, it kind of hooks before the fender there, kind of under the fender before the tire there, so he can kind of stick to it and he can kind of drive with it, just like he was in the movie when he was trying to hide from all the rusty cars in the tent. So it was pretty cool. There's a very nice decaled sign here. It has Lane McQueen with the, his signature there, Rusty's, and a little bottle of Rusty's there as well. Now, unfortunately, he's just got his regular happy expression, but as the package and the movie show, he's very worried and kind of nervous, so I really wish that Mattel had that expression on him instead of this happy, I'm so happy to be here expression, because that was just not what McQueen looked like. Now, he does have his flat eyelids here. Actually, my version here actually has raised eyelids, which is kind of surprising. I was not expecting that. He's just got his basic 95 ball. I mean, this is essentially here just a basic Lightning McQueen. And the only new thing about him is the sign right there. So that's basically all for McQueen with sign. I just really like the art about him. The car itself, nah, don't really care that much. Now here we have Giuseppe Motorsi, which is Francesco Bernoulli's crew chief. Now he was released originally as a Kmart exclusive 2-pack, and then was released last year in a 2-pack with Francesco Bernoulli, and I actually picked that up. So I was kind of unsure whether I'd buy another one this year, but I thought it's a pretty cool car, and he's being released as a single, which is kind of uncommon for crew chiefs, and until this year, because basically all crew chiefs really are released in a 
multi-pack or in a two-pack. So it's kind of nice that we're getting some single ones this year. Now, I believe he is an Alpha Romeo. Do not know the exact type, but all that I know is that he is an Alpha Romeo. Now, here we have Sal Macchiani. Or, I've, I'm sorry, Sean Crash. Sean Crash was in a two-pack with Sal Macchiani. Now, this is the exact same model and basically the same exact color, but there are a few differences. For example, there's definitely more of an outline around his hood there. As you can see, there's definitely more of a definite outline there. Their little hood ornament grill things right there are basically the same. Now, if you look on Francesco Brinley, or Giuseppe Motorisi here, you can see there's a crack symbolizing that there is a mouth plate right there. Whereas with Sal, there isn't a mouth plate. Their rims are the same. Now, of course, this is basically like a Giuseppe Motorisi without any decals and without his headset there because here, as you can see, you have the kind of Italian flag, red, white, and green with the World Grand Prix there and the little emblem. And that kind of moves on to the back here. We don't have a license plate for Giuseppe, but there's a spot where there would be a license plate. Sal does, or Sean does have a license plate though, so it's kind of odd that Giuseppe does not. There's the little gas cap right there where the gas would be entered. And of course, he has his cool headset. Now, I always like the expression on Giuseppe here. It's a pretty cool expression indeed. So that's basically all for Giuseppe. Now, there was also another Alfa Romeo released in 2014. This is Kareem Cavi. Pretty cool one. This is probably my favorite Alfa Romeo that Mattel has released just because love the color and love those glasses on top. So I'll be right back with the rest of them from the case. Here we have Mood Springs, aka Chuck Armstrong. Now this is a very desirable and sought after piston cut racer because of the fact that he was only released very few times. And the release I have of him here is the Kmart exclusive rubber tire release. So now he's being released with plastic tires, which was very rare back a few years ago because the only way you can get the plastic tire version was in a launcher, which was very rare, and the motor speedway of the South set, which I don't even need to tell you guys how rare that is. So here we have him. Of course, he's got mood springs on the front there. Now it's pretty obvious that his product is springs. So... <laughs> Nothing really to explain there. Now, I always loved his design here and how the 33 resembles springs. I thought that was very creative, very nice. He's got his sponsors there on the side, a nice white stripe going along the side of him. Towards the back here, we got a few of the Mood Springs logo there. There's no slogan or more of a description to it, but basically all you need to know is that he sells or the company that he represents sells springs. So as I said, he's got these cool rubber tires here. Now I don't really have a preference rubber tires or not because I just put them on the, on the shelf there. I don't really roll them along, but he does have a pretty cool rolling, very nice and quiet, stuff like that. Now he does have the raised eyelids because it's an older release and the new version does not unfortunately. We've already went over this guys. I know you guys know what I'm talking about here. So that's basically it for Mood Springs. One of my favorite Piston Cut racers. I'm really glad Mattel decides to release them this year. Now here we have Andy Vaporlock, and I actually reviewed this one a few weeks ago because I received him from China. So if you'd like to check out that review, the link is down below. And I'll just briefly show him in this video. So basically, he is the same model as Circus Sedan here, which is a pretty heavy, heavy car. It actually is surprisingly a lot of metal, which is great. I love when Mattel uses these kind of heavy castings. It just makes you feel like you're getting something worth the four dollars you're spending. Now Andy Vaporlock here unfortunately though does have the same license plate as Circus Sedan which is 47-M4U. As you can see there, they're both the same. Mattel, come on, you almost had a perfect die cast here until you put the same license plate on them again, but not a huge deal. On this side here, he's got kind of more of a speckled, rusty decals, where on the other side, it's more of a smooth, looks cleaner, and more new. And he actually has a dent. I don't believe I mentioned this in my original review of him, but if you can kind of see that right there, 
there's a dent on this door. There's a perfect angle right there. You can see the dent on them, which is actually pretty cool on Mattel. I'm glad that Mattel kind of added that de detail to them there. And I believe one of the other Rusty cars that'll be coming out this year also will have a dent. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we have Artist Ramon. Now this guy is pretty nice, although I would probably be more excited about him if we didn't already have this, which is Body Shot Ramon. And Body Shot Ramon came out in 2013 in the Wheel Well Motel series. That was a long time ago, and those series have definitely not came back. But basically, I always really liked this Ramon. It was a very cool lime green Ramon. And as you can see, he has this paint gun right here that he used to paint Lightning McQueen, which is also the same paint gun that appeared on the Toys R Us exclusive yellow hydraulic Ramon. As you can see there, they're the same paint gun. And so now basically Mattel is releasing the same exact Ramon, but without the paint gun. Now there are a few other differences. First of all, you can see that the expression in the eyes is slightly different, although not too noticeable. The decals on him are basically the same, but if you can kind of see right here on Body Shop, there's this red stripe that goes along the back here, uh, along the back, and that is not present on Artist Ramon here. The only red stripe that you can kind of see is actually underneath the tail wing right here, or whatever you'd like to call it, whereas this one, it's actually above it. So that's a very, very small difference, but you know, it is a difference nonetheless. On the back here, of course, he has his traditional low and slow license plate, so nothing has really changed there. Another difference here we can see is that this window here is kind of more clear, and this one here is gray, it's kind of opaque. This one's it's opaque too, you can't see in, but I feel like it's a little bit more realistic than the gray windows that appeared on Body Shop Ramon. Everything else though is the same, as you can see, same rims and same patterns on him as well. Uh, now, I really like these Ramones here, but obviously it's just kind of boring to get the same exact Ramon just missing up parts. It's kind of like a degrade instead of getting a, a new car. And to conclude the video, we have Jonathan Wrenchworks here, which was originally released in 2010, a part of the Final Lap collection, and now made his appearance in 2013, his reappearance in the Rusty's Racing Series, and he's back again in the Rusty's Racing Series. Now, I actually wanted to pick one up back in 2013, but I wasn't able to, I don't know, I didn't buy one, I wasn't really into collecting extras, so now, definitely wanted to pick one up, I'm really excited that I did. He's got this really cool rusty design here. If you feel him in person, you can just feel the rust on him actually. And now he's completely different feel than Andy Vaporlock. Andy Vaporlock has much of a more smoother feel. Whereas Jonathan, you can kind of feel the roughness on him, which is very nice. I love that detailing that Mattel does on him. Very nice indeed. Now only in the movie you saw this. You just saw Jonathan Wrenchworks like this in the movie because of the fact that he was in the commercial and they're displaying how if you just kind of do a swoop of the Rusties, you can have a silver bumper again, or you can completely rid yourself of rust, which probably isn't true, but whatever. And um, it would be actually cool if we got a new release of Jonathan Wrenchworks with the shiny bumper instead of the rusty one here. I feel like they could have done that by now because they've re-released him twice, but whatever. His license plate reads Evil or E V I L L E, if we can focus in there. And that's basically all for Jonathan here. He's just kind of like a regular sedan, kind of a grumpy expression, even though on the card art he actually looks happy. Now, I just wanted to compare him to Milo here, even though he is his own unique model. Milo is kind of similar to him in the way that they're both sedans here. And they're just kind of similar, although Milo is a lot bigger and has kind of a different structure to him. And I just also wanted to show Donna Pitts so we can kind of see some of the cool rusty cars that have been released so far. And I believe we're getting like four more in addition to Andy Vaporlock this year. So that is very, very cool indeed. So that is all for 2016 KC. Again, I apologize for the long video, but I do hope you guys enjoyed and thank you very, very much for watching. And my question for you is today, 
What is your favorite die cast from this case? I think my favorite would be actually Mood Springs because I love his design and just love that Piston Cup racer. But I also love Andy because I love new characters, new designs and stuff like that. And now this is one of the least diverse cases I have seen in a very long time. We have three Piston Cup racers, we have three die casts associated with Rusty's Racing, and we only actually have two cars that are from Cars 2 that are new or notable re-releases in my opinion. So that is all for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy and I'll see you guys tomorrow for a suggestion video. See you guys then. Bye now.